live in a house that was built in 1938 and it's part of a, a little set of triplets in Flora Hill in Bendigo. Um, it's currently three bedrooms. It was four bedrooms at one point um, and one bathroom. And we've been living in it for about 10 years yeah. and having our kids and working part time and doing all sorts of things to try and gradually build it up to be low energy using, low water using, all of those sorts of things. So we've, uh, we've been here 10 years. Yeah. So we've, um, you know, we've put solar panels on the roof. We've put a solar water system up. We've insulated the roof and the ceiling. Um, we've fixed a couple of the windows with, uh, with e-glass. We've got a beautiful bay window at the front of the house with stained glass and it's got um, a panel of e-glass with it as well now. We've done lots of gap sealing. Mm. Um, our appliances are probably the most efficient you can get on the market um, throughout the house. And um, also externally, and I think you have a, a hybrid motor vehicle. That's right. We do, we do, and we're looking forward to having a shared electric one um, at some time in the future. Um, but yeah, we've, we've, we've also built a couple of pergolas to shade the north and the west side of the house and we're growing vines over those. Um, mm. We built, a, we built a chook shed out of the old garage that was here. Our Do island that. bench is built out of that garage too. Yeah. We just, as we've done small renovations, we've tried to reuse as much as we can mm. um, and uh, tried to avoid making change where it wasn't necessary as well. And we've, we've also put in um, 14 fruit trees um, we have two wicking bed veggie gardens and we have a, yeah. a veggie garden on the fence as well. And, and, um, and all the other plants on the property are um, local native. So um, yeah, we've been making, making slow and steady changes. I mean, the other thing to say about the house is that um, we use under five kilowatts of power a day. Even while we're working from home, we do still have gas. Um, that's our kind of next goal is to get rid of, we don't have gas for cooking anymore, but we've got gas for um, heating. So we've got gas ducted. So that's our, our last remaining non-renewable. So let's call it a renovation rather than extension. Because I think we're only extending the house about a metre and a half in, in yeah. one little bit. Yeah, I think <laughs> we're only adding 10 or 14, something like that, metres squared to the house or of a it's more of a reorganization of the house and we've had this reorganization in our minds since we first walked into the house um, and saw that it had a north facing backyard um, and the yeah we've got this funny arrangement where we've got the and you'll see when you share the plans the kitchen is in the middle of the house and it doesn't look north or south it's got tiny little windows to the east and the laundry and toilet are on the northeast corner of the house. Just where you want to sit and have breakfast. We also have a big empty space in the middle of our house, which was the original dining room. Mm. Um, and the house had a, a renovation done on it in the early 90s. Um, and that put a living area on the north side, which is nice. But there's just a big open room in the middle that is kind of nothing. It's about 12 square metres of hallway. Wow. Yeah, yeah right in the middle of the house. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a box. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's dark and you kind of can't use it for anything. Um, so we've, we've kind of, you know, there's, there's a, a, a functionality reason and a livability reason um, and a sustainability reason for, for the renovation um, because, um, you know, we want the house to be able to survive heat waves. Um, it's, it's poorly um, insulated in the walls. Um, the, the windows are, you know, original from the, you know, 1930s and, and they may as well not be there. Um, so, yeah, drafts, wrapping, insulation in the walls, you know, there's, there's lots of reasons to, to, um, to do the renovation. Been drawing ourselves with a pencil for six or seven years, probably. Yeah. Um, and getting a good feel for, you know, where the sun is and where the light is and where we want to be and how we want to live in the house. Mm. Um, 
But our first step, we, we, we thought we might do um, the kind of staged approach. Um, last year, we started thinking about that and our first step was going to be to get a second bathroom because we've got three kids, um, two adolescents, and uh, having one toilet and one shower, it has started to get a bit ordinary in our household. <laughs> Um, so we started thinking about that and we started talking to an interior designer friend of ours um, and engaged his services to think about how we could organise things. And that was probably step one. And then I think the next step following all of that, those years of thinking was actually uh, in lockdown. I don't know. We just had a lot of time to think. I don't know if anyone else was the same. But we uh, finally just sort of threw out some of the limits that we'd had before. We were trying to keep the walls, all of the walls where they were, and it just wasn't working. And it was Ian who actually went, right, what if we turn that room sideways, turn this around and um, what, it, yeah, and drew up basically what we think will work for this house. And we have um, gas central heating. And it's quite an efficient system. It's worked very well since we moved in here. It's quite, it's quite nice really to be able to turn it on. But we don't want to use, we don't want to use gas. And um, so we've been thinking long and hard about um, how best to to have you know heat pumps or air conditioners, split systems that um, can do the job. In the the philosophy of the build is pretty important. And um, you know. We, we, we talked about the wood that was in our garage. Um, that's going to be in our internal walls as well. And um, so when we're moving walls around and whatever, we want to be capturing and, you know, reusing that, mm. the materials that were in this house. Um, and then trying to research what materials you can clay the house with and, you know, how to, how to build the new section so that um, it's, you know, sustainable from a materials point of view or as sustainable as it can be. The windows, we're, we're following the, the stern recommendations of my um, Efficient Electric Home group on Facebook. Um, and the recommendations of, uh, are that the UPVC windows, um, double glazed windows, are probably the best bang for buck. Um, we're pretty comfortable that they've got some options that will look good externally and sort of look woodish. We're not looking for the fake wood look. Um, but yeah, that, they'll probably be the best ones out there. One of the dilemmas that we probably didn't mention earlier is um, the, uh, the size of the windows relative to the size of the house on the north side. So we've been, um, yeah, tossing up how, how big they can be. There's something just very attractive about having that ceiling to floor window um, look and it really definitely connects you outside with um with the garden that we've worked really hard on and we'd like to you know feel like we're in a bit more um but there's that trade-off with thermal comfort so we're, we're working with an energy assessor now to work out you know what size we can manage in this part of the world we borrowed the bendigo sustainability group camera we discovered that our front door like our front door is glass and old it's it's original um and we discovered it may as well not be there but what really surprised us was that the section of wall above the door also may as well not be there. Um, wow. It was yeah. incredibly cold. And corners, um, corners of walls, roofs, skirting boards, um, they're all um, shocking. <laughs> um, and we've done a lot of draft stripping, you know, of doors and windows and gaps and whatever, but they're just, you know, not in 30 house, they're just everywhere. So um, this would be a good chance to block up um, all of those once and for all and to make sure the walls are properly insulated um, you know we'd already blocked up the the little vents from the days when you had kerosene heating um, so obviously that's made a difference already but yeah we're looking forward to um, to having no more gaps it, there's really you know there's a few drivers there's there's a house that suits um, that suits our family and and um, you know we want to make sure that um, our lifestyle in our house is ecologically sustainable um, as quickly as possible um, so that we feel good about living in it. But, you know, it's also about um, 
comfort and livability. Mm. You know, that idea of sitting, sitting, having your breakfast with the morning sun coming up on you is, is um, mm. quite a nice and lovely idea that we, we, we would like to, to do sooner rather than later. That's yeah. one of the reasons we chose it. We have schools at a walkable distance and we yeah. have um, a cafe and a post office and a shop at a walkable chemist. distance and yeah. a chemist. And, you know, we can walk, it's a 20 minute walk into town. Yeah. Um, and and we have the world's best neighbours. 